Welcome to this graphing series, and in this series we're going to be looking at how you do graphs. And we can start off with very junior science type graphs and get the fundamentals right, and then we're going to get harder and do look at graphs that have multiple um, different objects graphed, graphs that uh, can f form different types of functions such as parabolic graphs, how do we linearize data, etc. And so we're going to have a series of graphs here starting from the very basics to, uh, to getting more and more complex as uh, we move through the series. But you want to have a very strong um, ability to do graphs because part of science is graphing your data so that you can make sense of it to see if there's any trends or links between variables. So let's get started with number one, which is the basics of graphing. What is a graph? Well, a lot of younger students confuse the terms graph and table, and they use the terms interchangeably. But a graph is a visual representation of your data, whereas a table is a set, how can we describe this? A table is a way in which you can show the numerical data that you record in. So when you're doing an experiment, you record your data, you're measuring something, and you write the data you get. It's not a graphical representation where you're using lines or using bar graphs. Some people use pie graphs. So table, experimental data, exists in a table. And a graph is a way in which we can visualize that data and we can see trends. So I guess the first thing is we need to say it's a visual representation. Right, the visual representation of your tabulated data. It's the data that you collect when you're doing a science experiment. Now, why do we do that? Why do we want to graph it? Well, we want to see, it's a lot easier to see trends between variables if you graph it compared to those trends in a table format. Now, what do I mean by variables? Well, hopefully you've watched the series on variables, but remember, a variable is anything that you can vary in an experiment. And when you do an experiment, you want to look at your variables and you want to change one variable, the one that you're investigating, that's called the independent variable. And then of course you want to measure a variable and that is the dependent variable. And then of course you have to control or keep a lot of variables the same to make it a fair test. Okay, so let's just take a quick example. If you were measuring the temperature of water and wanted to see how fast that temperature of the water increased its temperature, right, then you're measuring temperature, that's your de dependent variable. You are deciding to measure it every, let's say, one minute, okay, and so that, that what you're deciding to measure one minute, two minutes, three minutes, etc., that's your independent variable. But all the other variables in the experiment you need to keep the same. If you need to have the same heat source, you need to have the same volume of water that you're recording. You need to have the same type of water, so fresh water, or are you looking at salt water? So a lot of variables you need to keep the same and you're only changing the one that you are investigating, which is the independent variable. But we can graph that data to see trends. Now not only can we do that, we can um, use the data once we've identified a trend to predict. We can predict values. And those values we can predict are ones that uh, we don't or haven't measured. And they can be values that are outside our data range, outside uh, or in the future. And we'll make a video on those types of predictive um, skills. Okay, so how do we draw a graph though? So let's rub off this and let's see the steps that you can use to draw your graph. All right, now that you've got a data set, you want to graph it, but how do you do that? Well, you follow these steps all the time and you'll end up with a amazing graph. Okay, first thing is we can use this acronym here called TAILS. Now t, t stands for title. Now every graph must have a title. You want to tell the person looking at your graph what they're relating, what they're investigating, and what the trends are. So the title tells you. Now you can't just do simple titles. Let's say we, like I said before, temperature. Uh, let's say we're going to do temperature versus um, time, right? So some students will go, oh yeah, we're measuring the temperature versus time. And so they'll just go, temp versus time. That's not a great heading. Okay, yes, it does have both, both variables there, but we need to be, make it a detailed heading. We need a little bit more description. And so if I said the temperature change of 100 mils of fresh water over 10 minutes, that's going to give me a lot more data, okay, a lot more information from that uh, graph, okay? So temperature versus time is not the most descriptive data. So with your titles, they need to be uh, descriptive. They need to have both variables in there. 
Well, what does A stand for? Well, A stands for your axes. So your axes need to be ruled. Now here I've got some grid paper and most of the time um, when you do graphs, you may not have grid, pa grid paper, you just got a piece of blank paper. And of course you use a ruler to rule up your axes. But if you've got grid paper, you need to also rule some axes, okay? So they need to be ruled. With the axes, you also need to um, ensure that you've got the right variables on the right side. So this is called the Y axis up here. And this is the X, X axis. So Y goes up, X goes across, all right? Um, some people like to think that X comes before Y in the alphabet and you crawl before you walk, all right? So you're crawling along the bottom before you stand up and you walk, okay? Depends on how you like to remember that. But Y is always vertical, X is horizontal. So we have our X and Y axes. Once we've got that, we need to think, okay, what variables do I place on them? And it's always the case that we put the variable that we're measuring on the y-axis and the variable that we are changing on the x-axis. Some people remember another, um, another uh, I guess you could say, acronym, which is dry mix. Now dry stands for dependent variable, right? Dependent variable goes on the y-axis, right? So the dependent variable, D, goes on the y-axis. And the R stands for the one that is responsive. So in other words, when you do an experiment, the variable that's changing or is responding to what you're deciding to change, that's called the dependent variable, right? So the dependent variable is the one that responds to the one that you have chosen to vary. And it's on the y-axis. So using our example here, we've chosen to measure the temperature every one minute, okay? The temperature is going to be different depending upon what time you measure it, right? So it's responding to how long you heat it. So the, the dependent variable is on the y-axis. The mix stands for the manipulated variable, that is the one that you are choosing as the experimenter. It is the independent variable, and it's on the x-axis, right? So that's what some people would like to use that one. Um, I've seen people use that, uh, like think of a baby, changing a baby, right? So when a baby, and here goes my drawing skills, all right? Um, okay, there's the head, there's the bottom, that's the nappy, there's the arms, and then I don't know, the feet are pointing out towards you maybe. <laughs> so this is the nappy, and you change the nappy, and the nappy is on the bottom, the bottom of the graph is the one that you are changing. So the variable that you're changing goes on the bottom of the graph, just like the changing of a baby is on the bottom. Another people use that, okay? So we've set up our axes, we've determined that our dependent variable is here, and our independent variable is here, okay? Of course that means you have to decide when you look at a table, what is a dependent and what is an independent variable, okay? And we're gonna do that every single time we draw a graph through this series here. What does I mean? Well, I means um, intervals. What do I mean by interval? Well, an interval is the distance between two points, right? So if I'm drawing my axes here, I've got to make sure my intervals are equal amounts. A certain amount of space represents the same amount. So if I just start, decide to start from zero here, and I decide to go two, and then I go four, six, I can't go 12, because that's saying that this amount of space represents 2, yep, 2, 2, but then the same amount of space now doesn't represent 2 anymore, it's representing 8, sorry, 8, 6, it's representing 6. So, um, I have to make sure my divisions are the same, okay, so the intervals are equal. A lot of students fall into the trap, okay, good old Star Wars Admiral Akbar. it's a trap! they fall into the trap of just using the values in the table. Don't just use the values in the table, try and make these nice and equal down here as well. All right, so I'll make sure that when we draw graphs in this series, we're gonna come back to that point. What does L mean? Well, L stands for labels. Your axes need to have labels. So your variable or your quantity needs to be labeled. So down here, I've got it labeled time. And up here, I've got it labeled temperature. 
But the other thing is it needs to have units. You need to make sure that what unit are we measuring it in? Well, it could be seconds, it could be hours, it could be days, it could be months. Okay, so the quantity that we're measuring is time and the variable, sorry, the um, amount that we're using each time is seconds, right? What about temperature? Well, we could do degrees Celsius, degrees Fahrenheit, or we could do a temperature such as Kelvin. So we gotta make sure we have units in parentheses, okay, in parentheses. What does S stand for? Well, S stands for scale. We want to make sure that we have the graph using most of the graph paper. We don't want some microscopic little graph scrawled down the corner here. We want to make sure it's using as much as the graph space as possible, and you could say maybe 75% or greater is what you're looking for. So when it comes to choosing scales, you have to choose a scale that's going to stretch the data out of the, as much as the graph paper as you can. Why do we do that? Well, because it's going to make it more accurate when we go to read off the graph. Okay, so they're the uh, things to think about when you draw a graph. And every single graph that we're going to do in this series, we're going to start off simple and get more and more complicated. We're going to try and relate it back to this. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. See you in the next video.